Today is Friday morning, it's low cost 7 behind me here, it's on the ground ready to roll out of the way and do some other things. Of course I'm lying, it's, um, it's not ready at all, it's, it's not far away, I'll put some hub on here, some thingy, roundy thingies. And... There's some roundy thingies here, it needs the big one with the black stuff around it, we've actually got the shock absorbers in the back there, just with some temporary springs, probably too strong for that, but they'll fit. It'll help, we'll be able to roll it around. Need to adjust the um, bump stop type thing, that the, the droop travel. It's actually a bit far if you look at the flanges there on our drive shaft. We'll actually crash the drive shaft into the drive shaft too, so that's no good. But that's um, top mount and we can put a bump stop under the axle to stop it going too far. That's, that's easy. But we've got an unboxing, we've got a car show with us on Sunday, but so we definitely need to move the low cost 7 before then. Got an unboxing, um, not not um, not rotors in here. Looks like a box for rotors. See, I had the um, the blade all prepared, ready to go. There's actually some a small amount of preparation done for this particular video, which is more than what I normally do. Look, there's things in there. Is this, is this heavy? Don't think there's anything in there. That seems like a lot of parts, doesn't it? Hang on, let me um That's better. I was seeing some flickering, I'm not sure if you guys were. Oh, yeah. These are our pads. Hang on a minute. This is supposed to be um you pay X dollars and you get per caliper worth of pads but hopefully there's not four four sets but there you go that's what's going on the back they're a race compound of sorts i think i've just been stabbed in the finger by a little bit of something never mind that's for the back these ones here these are what's going in the front get me out of there so there's two sets in there as well. That's interesting, eh? You sell them per caliper and supply them as a set of four. That's right. That's geez, not much material on those, but anyway. That's how it goes. That's the front. Because you have more braking on the front than you do on the rear, right? So there's some... You need more. Makes sense, right? More weight on the front. Let's have a look at what's going in the back. Now these are different colours due to stock levels in little old New Zealand. Uh, we've got a colour at the front and a different colour at the back. It's not the end of the world. You can't really see them. They won't come out of the bag! You can't really see them when they're on the car anyway, so... Gosh. I got it. There we go. That's that's what's going on the back. They actually look pretty bloody grass, don't they? Maybe we should upgrade the march. I'm not suggesting putting these on on the march and putting the march ones on the uh, low cost seven. That would be nuts, wouldn't it? Oh yeah, they put a, a nipple on everywhere, depending on the orientation that you've put it into the car. It's interesting. I've not installed those ever before, so, and then we'll, this might be, can I do this? You'll notice I've swapped hands. Yeah, it was easier, wasn't it? That was good. So we've got black ones for the front, and we've got silver ones for the back, or grey, or anno, I think they're called. Um, slight, I think these are... We'll say on there, one's mini light and one's, um, didn't really say on there, does it? One's mini light, one's dynolite, I believe, so they're not exactly the same thing, but 100% good to go for what we're doing. So I'm going to put some pads in here, stick this together on the back and start setting up the back because that's going to be not too far away from making it work pretty easily and put some wheels on it and get out of the way all right 
a pair of calipers, well, a front and a rear, right? They're not really a pair, but a set, I guess. Uh, pads installed. Now we have a look at how we're going to get on with our fit. I'm cheating, right, because I've already looked at this. That is, can we see down inside there? I've got a reflection on the screen of my phone, so I can't see what the phone's seeing. <laughs> but that is actually pretty much bang on. If I mount that about there like that, that's grouse. Rear brakes will be pretty good. And um, swept surface, I guess you call it. Contact patch, not terrible. It's not perfect we've got a little bit of pad overhang there but that's not a big deal at all that's pretty good mint as far as getting um that's essentially an oem part that's a ford part off a of sierra fitting on an escort diff with an aftermarket pad and caliper that's not a terrible setup fronts uh, it's not as good as i'd like definitely not as good as i'd like but it would be okay that um, fits on there pretty nicely. You can see it's clearly looking for a bigger rotor than what we've got. Um, we can see where our pad is in relation to everything down in there, down in the little gap. The inside edge of the pad is basically on the inside radius there. Where are they gone? There they are. So there is about there wasn't it something like that there is again there's a bit of unswept pad there might have these are not particularly expensive might have a hunt around see what is available if there's something same same as far as this goes and this goes with more here then that might be better all right, before we were rudely interrupted by the weekend and um, Frankton Thunder, which I'm not sure you might have seen that video by now, car parky type thing for this, just park around and talk, people look and stuff and things. We were doing the brakes on this and we got to the point where it's actually pretty easy to get the caliper on the back here and make a plate to go in between here and the caliper. And the caliper could be back or the front top or the bottom won't matter on the setup uh, could put it anywhere we like it'll be at the front because that's what I want to do that was going well one of the things you do have to check obviously you can make your brakes all work but can your wheels fit over the top of it and in this case not quite very close but it is a, a, a fail there's not enough clearance between the back of the spokes and the front of the disc for the brake caliper to I can't show you to fit around the corner here like my hand is there. Originally we were going to go with single pot calipers and there would have been plenty. I decided and the owner agreed and we upgraded to twin pots. So now we've got a piston on each side, which means we need more height that way. So we're just looking into options. There's some rotors kicking around that might work. We're just going to figure out if we can make something work. Otherwise, I don't like using them. A spacer will do the trick. We need about 12, this is about 15 with two. You're not allowed to use two. Motorsport New Zealand rules say you can use a, sing, a singular spacer. So we need one that's probably about 12 is, is the distance that we need. And before you do that, then there's other things to consider. So we've got the width of the tire here um, from the body. I know where all the body's sitting and all that. I know how wide the guards are. Put the one up on one side and then check the other side and lo and behold the axle's not sitting in the middle of the car. Left to right. Things have moved. That's what tends to happen when stuff gets powder coated and if you don't have adjustments built into your suspension arms you can't really fix it very easily. That needs a bit more of a nipping up Mr Glenn. So what I've done is I've cut this bush. I've chopped some off this side of it so that the whole diff can be pushed that way, which is the way it needed to go, to get it in the correct position in the car. 
Actually, that might not be all that bad as far as... Maybe another half a turn on this. We do want some clearance here, believe it or not. And people will say, why? No, you can't have blue spots. You kind of have to. Uh, the way this is all set up, there's a steel bush through the inside of the rubber bush on the inside of here. So you can clamp that steel bush, that's fine. Um, and then this arrangement can pivot because you imagine if you go over a bump on that side, wheel goes up, but this won't be able to do that. So you have to have a little bit of a pivoting arrangement going on here. So if I do all these up and they clamp on either side of that tube, it's not going to be able to do that. It's going to fatigue the welding in here. It's going to snap. It's going to fail. So you can't actually wrench these right all the way up. There has to be some clearance between here and here. There has to be a little bit of movement. But you don't want so much that your whole rear axle is dock, 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 dock with a car handle. Fan. Funny. So... Um, it's just, the, it's just the nature of the beast. I would personally would not design a suspension system like that. It's what was in there. Um, it's what they run. So that's what we're running with. These are all tightened up at the end here. There's, there's not the issue there. We have some clearance on this. So that's not a problem. Anyway, my point was where I was going with all this is can't do anything more on the back. We have to move back to the front and you'd think the front would have bigger issues because we've got bigger brakes going on there but it's actually easier as far as the brakes inside the wheels go that's a piece of cake that works that's easy uh, we've just got to deal with this situation here whether we want to run this tie rod end or whether we want to run a uh, rod end a, a fancy oh look there's some in here I think are there some in here I think this box here has got some. Have we been in here before? It says it's got rod ends. We need, we've been hunting in here. I think those are a bit small. That might not quite be up to the task. That's probably about what we want. Something similar size to that. Maybe a little bit smaller. That's probably a half inch. It's probably too big. But You know what I mean? Something like that. There's actually a couple of those in there. Don't know where they've come from. They feel a bit loose. Hmm. Those are no good. So we might go and see our mates at Waikato Bearings. Get the um, the female thread on that. See if we can get one to match this. And then we just put this here. And I make a little stud out of 4140 um, to go into here. And we put a couple of spaces in between here and here to shift this arm away from this rotor. And it'll be beautiful. It's a few days later, it's now Thursday, like the week following <laughs> the week that this video started. Continuity may be all up the wazoo, but I was, is that a word? I was looking for brake rotors to go into the back to change the offset to shift the rotor inwards so that we could get our twin piston calipers because they've got a piston on each side of the rotor, which means you need quite a decent offset on the wheels and we just don't have that. I was looking for that. I was busy looking at that. I remembered we've got this this little thing here. See it full droop. That's actually even touching. Just sometimes it's going to make a liar of me. Oh yeah, it is when it's bolted down, right? But it's not bolted down at the moment. It's it's loose. That's why it's not touching. So ideally, we'd want to move that that way a little bit, and there's enough room in the wheel for the caliper. That's not a problem. Uh, the only way to do that is to machine some more off the hubs, and we can't really do that. There's not enough hub to do that. So I had a bit of a, a look at that. It'd be nicer if it was slightly bigger diameter as well. And um, oh, I found some, and these are cheap. These are off some obscure thing that they don't want anymore. It's disappearing. So these were really, really cheap. Now, if this is not too large, which it's looking promising, but we'll, f we'll find out in a minute. I'm going to machine these and put these on the front because these are slightly larger diameter, not, not by much, just enough that we won't have the pad hanging off the edge of the rotor anymore, which is great, and less um, height so that it brings this back edge of the rotor here, which is a problem for us at the moment, um, towards the outside of the vehicle. So we may actually kill two birds with one stone. It may be a failure. I'll show you if it's a failure and I'll show you why but um, 
at this point in time, it's looking really promising. And that's fine, we'll take those rotors off because they're still perfectly usable for the back. They can be spears for the back. And um, looking at where we are with the guards now, now that I've centered up the axle, we can actually just put a spacer on those rear wheels and poke them out 10 mils and the rear brakes will work. So a little bit of a hiccup, but not the end of the world and things will work out by the looks of it. Let's take this off and have a look. So it's going to be difficult to show you with one hand. Oh, I might be able to rest that against that. There we go. Rest that against that. Rest that against that. You can see that's further away than that, right? So our clearance issue, that, or lack of clearance that we had here, that's pretty much gone. It'll be back to about where the factory had it, which is not ideal by a long shot, but better than, uh, better than contacting. And as far as we can do this, we can do this is all a big challenge doing this with one hand. That fits on there nicely as far as pad surface area over the, um, let's call it the swept area. See the actual road is just, just out past the edge of that now. So uh, that's very good. So our offset's good. Our pad area is good. Where this caliper is sitting in relation to the center line is the next thing that I need to look at and suss out because although this is a bigger rotor, we weren't anywhere near touching the edge of that before with this one because we were impacting on the inside. And as you can see, that is a bigger diameter than that. So this may actually, hopefully, be that way a little bit. Uh, basically, the next step in just mocking things up and making sure it'll work, we've got to figure out that we can put these four holes in to mount it onto here, but I don't think that'll be a problem. We'll just sneak into the gaps wherever they end up. We can't crash into these ones, we can't crash into those ones, but there's enough room there. That'll be fine. We've just got to get the centre ball right. So this is some... It'll be imperial, but it's about like 66.39 or something like that. And this is about 65.4 or something off the top of my head. So it just needs to go into the magic roundy roundy machine and just have a little bit of a nom 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 on the inside of that. And then that can go onto there and we'll see where we're at. And if it's wrong and it doesn't work and it's a complete abortion, I, I doubt it will be. Um, these cost less, they cost me less than a box of beer basically these are cheap really cheap so it's good let's see if they work if they work I've, I actually bought two sets right so we've got four of them so they've got these ones and then some spares but I'll buy the rest of the stock so they'll never need front rotors ever again that's some real engineering stuff going on right there you can use the other word if you like that starts with this look at the situation have to think about it do some research, do some measuring, order things, drink some energy drink and hit it with a hammer. If it doesn't fit, that's perfect. Perfect. That's um, absolutely 100% super. Fits. I mean, there's probably not going to be enough room for your mag wheel weights in between the, the wheel and the caliper. But um, it works. That is... As far as what we're doing here, this is as close to a perfect solution as you're going to get without completely changing everything, right? So we could build a custom hub for that and we could put two-piece rotors in and all this sort of carry on, but really, we're not going to do that. If we're going to go that far into reinventing everything, then um, we probably wouldn't be using these arms with these rubber bushes in them, whole thing bushes. We, they'd be chromoly arms with rod ends on them and stuff like that which I mean they can do that later if they want to do that change the knuckles and get all the suspension geometry perfect for the car but this is 100% going to be somebody cut someone off again there's been a lot of that this morning actually people have forgotten how to drive on Thursday um yeah that that's in there that'll be perfect perfectly good for what it's doing so awesome so um I'll put some holes in this and I'll work out what we're going to do with the, the bit that goes from here to the, the bit that's here, the, the brake bracket onto the um, upright knuckle, whatever. Cool. The bracket part 
Now, but there, that's the original factory one there. We can actually take that off. If we do like a five mil plate with just a slight kink on the other side, that'll work out and line up very, very nicely. Speaking of lining up, if you're mucking around changing hubs, machining them and all that sort of carry on, and in fact, even just fitting normal rotors onto a car with, with no issues, you need to make sure the run out's good. Uh, I'm not sure how well that shows on the screen with me standing here wobbling around but there's zero run out on that now originally when I put this together just a few minutes ago we were on the bench over there I was talking about stuff and things and we put the bolts in put this or well, the holes I bolted this to this put it on the car we had quite a bit of run out it was no good so I put this back in the lathe and machined it how I had done previously we still had run out so I realised, well, this is not going to work because we haven't got a good true surface here compared to what the hub is actually running on, on those bearing surfaces in there. So I came back over to the lathe over here and I made a tool. Pretty simple. You can't guarantee these are going to run 100% true because, they're, I mean, it's a cheap, cheap, I don't know what it is worth now. It's probably a three or $4,000 lathe, but it was cheap at the time. So you put something in there and then you machine it and then you know that is running true. It doesn't matter what these jaws are doing. If these are off center by 5 thou or whatever it is, 0 0.01 of a millimeter or something that works out, whatever. If these are out, you put something in there, run it, machine that, don't move it, don't take these off and shift it around or anything. And that surface there will be running 100% true except for any tolerances in the bearings as far as slop in the bearings, which is negligible. So I machined that so it would fit within the cone for the bearing, the inner bearing, the taper. And then I put the actual bearing. It's bird on the roof behind the washer here. Jeebus. I don't know what he's up to up there. He's going to get told to go away soon. Uh, put the bearing there. Put a racket in the other end here. And put this taper into there. And then it was running true. So then I could get my tool, set this all up, run it on the back face of it, buzz it nice and square, put it all together, and um, you see that's running true. Same for the other side. So now we're good, now we can make the brackets. I'm gonna go shoot that bird. I didn't shoot it. Of course I didn't shoot it. It's New Zealand, we're supposed to look after. Look at that, see that's a nice fit in there. And you can see on the other side here, if we take out that original factory bracket, the, um, I'm a bit shaky, aren't I? The inside edge of the hub face that you can see in between the, where that bracket is. You can see the disc rotor, then there's a bracket, then there's a knuckle face or upright face or whatever. If you follow that line through, apart from the uh, slight misalignment we've got going on here, it's actually not that far away from the ears on the brake caliper. So we can do just a slight little kink in our bracket. So we start on the upright face like this, give it just a tiny little kink out like that, and then have the brake caliper ears and we'll be good as gold. Not the easiest thing to make in there, they're a little bit fiddly, a couple of, couple of things going on in there, I can show you, in worst case I might drop a washer or two on the floor, we'll be alright with that won't we. There's a washer on the floor. There's a bit of a recess going on here to do with where the hub sits and where the seal sits and all that sort of carry on. So I'm just going to make something that goes on there, does this, but slightly differently. End of the day, for me anyway, I've, I've had enough. The difference between that side and that side is a couple of hours work or thereabouts. And this side actually has a brake caliper hiding in there. Look at that. It's in there and it goes round, see? It's just the pads just touching against the rotor there. There's a little tweak that needs to happen, but that's pretty good. See, hiding inside there is a Willwood brake caliper. This actually is just, just barely just, has probably left a couple of little marks, which I'll have to fix. But there's enough room to have the wheel weights on there and fit in between the caliper and the wheel, so that's pretty good. Let's take the wheel off, I'll show you stuff and things. See? little bit of a mark there. That's ah, fine. The uh, coating, whatever it is they put on these, is 
harder than the lead that's on the wheel weights on the inside, so that's all good. There you go, it goes round, it does make noise, like I say. We've got brake calipers, uh, pads, sorry, that are just touching. A little bit of room on this side, same amount of room, I can't get my finger in there on the other side. Now this bracket's just a temporary, put it together and see if we can get it all to fit in the right spot. Uh, it's no good like this, because you can't have your safety on the nut on the back there, see? It's too close. It's, uh, yeah, it's basically touching, isn't it? Yeah, that might be some of the noise we're hearing. We could loosen off the wheel bearings. And... <laughs> yeah, so that's no good. So it'd need to be a thicker bracket, so 10 mil thick or something like that, and then you could drill and tap into it, and then have the safety out the back of it. That would be all right, and you could put a sand bolt through there. So that's one way to do it, but then it's going to have to have a lot of machining done to allow for the clearance on the back of the hub there, which does actually... Ju this is a five mil plate now it just touches that at the moment so what i think i might be doing i'll have a think about it over the tomorrow and over the weekend is i might be putting a thread in here i'm going to like a 12 mil bolt and have a, a plate similar to this start on this side come down just put that that that's called a joggle right you start there and you go that way and you come along and then you go back the other way to make it flat that's a joggle so same but this bracket over here with a joggle like that and that'll work put a thread in there so now that i've got my dimension sussed it's a horrible noise and now that i've got that sussed and i know where it needs to go and i know it fits inside the wheel and there's enough room beauty so that's probably the i don't know someone else would have done a better job somewhere at some point in time a bigger job but that's that's about as big a disc and caliper as i can fit inside that 13 inch i think it's the 13 by 7. so pretty happy with that that is plenty of brakes for the front of this car um no doubt some idiot will be able to get into it and beat on those and cook them but for normal use driving it sensibly they will be 100 percent good plenty adequate radio tomorrow got to do some checks on this thing and put it on the trailer get ready for um, one of the things that we're doing at Pukekohe one of the final events Pukekohe Motorsport Park Saturday maybe Sunday we'll see about Sunday that's if I don't break the car I, I'm good at doing that um, yep that's the farewell Pukekohe thing premier events it's their final thing at Pukekohe and then the weekend after that is a official motorsport final thingy shindiggy do flicky thingy and then on oh, there's other stuff and things right but on the 2nd of april we have a spot for the actual last track day at pukekohe uh, we'll hopefully be there with the march assuming something horrible hasn't happened to it in the meantime or the weather's not cooperating or whatever so that'll be an interesting day that track's been kicking around for a long 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 time and we're fortunate enough to have a spot with play day on track for the very last day ever that cars will be driving around that racetrack at speed there'll, there'll be no doubt after it's closed there'll be some people that will drive it around the track but they won't be allowed to do it at pace i wouldn't think uh, i'm not sure what the what the plan is with it they might run a digger through it and put an end to it i don't know um like share subscribe hit the notification bell so that you can see those videos because they should be pretty good i'll get the gopro in for saturday and sunday for this weekend uh and yeah you'll see that soon thanks for watching cheers bye